Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be going through how to install Parrot Linux 4.7. We'll first download it, then I'll explain how to flash it onto a disk, we'll boot the disk, and finally run through how to install it on an empty storage space of your choice. If you're new and stopping by to watch an install today, please take a moment to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more installs. We're here on the ParrotLinux.org site. I'll put a link in the description below to go ahead and download Parrot Linux. I like their website. It's really cool with this Parrot in the background. And uh, they make it pretty simple to download. We can go ahead and hit the download to go to their download section. Then we have uh, three different types of builds here. Uh, the security, the home or workstation, and then other builds. If you want all the specialty tools supplied by the Parrot Linux distribution, you're going to want to download the security version over here. The home and workstation version is really just for uh, people who want to use it without the all the extra tools that come with security. So just for using like a web browser or just simple tasks that you'd perform on a daily with an operating system. And then you have other builds uh, for ARM images, uh, specifically for embedded systems. Uh, we do not want this one. You can choose between these two. Uh, the install is going to be very similar, but I want to try out the security version today because this is a little unique to this uh, Linux distribution. So let's go ahead and hit the download button here. And then you actually have uh, three different uh, choices here, the live plus installer ISO with uh, Parrot Security, the KDE edition, and the Security edition. And it tells you kind of uh, what, what the differences are here. You have uh, the Mate desktop, the KDE Plasma desktop, or for virtual machines to download. Parrot Security is the one that I want, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the download button right here. You can also go through the mirrors and find yourself the best mirror if this one's too slow. And as you can tell, we are downloading now. And now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch the Belena Etcher app in order to flash the image onto a USB or CD. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description below if you want to download the application. You can also use any other application that can create a bootable disk. First thing we do here is select an image. So I have the Parrot Security 4.7. This is an X64, so 64-bit image. So you'll make sure you're installing this on a 64-bit computer. Then we'll select our target. And it says that nothing is connected right now, so I'll go ahead and put my USB inside. A second here. And it should automatically populate this one. And if you have more than one USB or CD in your system, you can go ahead and hit change and select it from here. Once this is done, very simple, hit the flash button, and you might have to put in a password. Go ahead and put your password in in order to allow it to flash and then you're on your way. After you've flashed the disk, you'll take it over to the computer where you want to install Parrot Linux 4.7 on and then insert it there. Then you'll have to boot into your BIOS in order to change the settings around and select a newly created bootable disk to boot first. This is usually done by finding the correct key to boot into BIOS for your particular computer. Usually one of the F keys like uh, F2, F10, then finding a tab usually called boot order and exchanging the order so the bootable disk is the first to boot. After you have that set up, you'll save and exit out of your BIOS and you should see a similar screen to this if you did everything correctly. And if you've made it this far, you'll go down to the bottom and select the install option. Uh, you can also go through the live mode and install it there as well. Uh, we can select which type of installer we want to use. Uh, we'll make it easier on ourselves instead of doing the command line uh, standard installer. Let's go ahead and use the uh, GUI option and install it with GTK GUI. This will just make the process a little easier, something we can look at and go through instead of just uh, doing it through their command line. And the first thing we'll go ahead and do is select a language. You can double click the language or you can hit the continue button at the bottom. Uh, United States is fine for my location. And then uh, what type of uh, keyboard we want to use, American English works. Give it a few moments while it just retrieves a few files here. You more than likely will need an internet connection. I believe this is a net installer, so it just has some of the basic packages that it uses 
to install with and everything else is downloaded from the web as you're installing it. First thing is to set up a root password. So go ahead, put a password in for the root user. Go ahead, also confirm that password. Below, you might have to scroll down, hit continue. Then it's asking for a full name of a new user. Uh, I'm gonna create a new user called Savvy Nick. And then the username for that user account, uh, Savvy Nick is fine for me. You can call it whatever you want. Put a password in for the new user. So I'm putting in a password and confirming it. We'll hit continue after this. What time zone you're in. I'm in Alaska today, so I'm gonna select Alaska and hit continue. At this point, it's just detecting a few disks and getting ready for partitioning them. Use the entire disk method. That's the very first one selected. You also have uh, different types of partitioning below if you want to go through those, but since we're beginners, we'll use the entire disk without any fancy setup here. Next, it'll tell you all the disks that is, exist in the system for use right now. You'll want to select the one that you would like to go ahead and partition. So make sure that any data on the disk that you select can be erased because it will erase all that. As it says, note that all data will be erased on the disk that you select right here. So this is a brand new SSD that I have and I suggest uh, using one as well. Go ahead, select it and hit continue. Then it asks you what type of partitioning scheme you want to use. All files in one partition is fine for me and it's recommended for new users. And since we're beginners, we'll select that one. Hit continue. Here it's telling you what the partitioning scheme is going to look like. And then we can go ahead and select the finish partitioning and write changes to disk. Right now it's telling us that uh, we are missing swap space. I'm not sure why uh, the default scheme doesn't have uh, swap at part of the partition. Um, you can also uh, set this up later. So I'm not going to worry about it too much and not return to the partitioning menu. I'll select no. You can do a little bit of research yourself and figure out why or how to go ahead and enable the swap space. All it's really for is uh, extra memory. Let's say if your physical memory gets all filled up, it'll start using swap. I'm not too worried about this because I have a lot of physical memory. I'll hit the uh, no option and hit continue here. And finally, it's asking, are we ready to write these changes? And yes, we are. Uh, I'm, I've confirmed that I'd have no data on this SSD because it's brand new and I am ready to write my changes. Everything is gonna be erased. And at this point, it is installing the base system here. So this might take a little bit. Once the base system is installed, we'll go ahead and install the boot loader. Uh, Grub is the default here. Go ahead and select the yes option and then hit continue. You can go ahead and select where you want to install the boot loader. So the current disk space where we installed Parrot was this dev SDA and it tells you Parrot Linux. So we select that and then hit continue. Give it a moment to install the boot loader. and to finalize a few things here. And here's the end of the installation. It says the installation has been completed. Go ahead and continue, and this will restart the computer. You'll wanna make sure you remove your installation media so you don't boot back into the live disk. And here we are, the login screen for Parrot uh, Linux. Go ahead and type in the password that you set up for your user. You can also select other users if you made more than one. Uh, Savvy Nick's the one I made, so I'm logging in with it. And here we go, welcome to your new Parrot Linux 4.7 desktop. It's asking you to go ahead and select a keyboard layout. 
for some reason the Spanish one is selected here. I'm going to select the English one and I don't really want to check for updates. You can test your keyboard. I'm certain it works so I'm going to hit OK here. Um, just a little bit about Parallel Linux. It's a uh, distribution that focuses heavily on security, privacy, and creating an easy way to deploy development environments for the end user. It's very lightweight and it also focuses on making the transition from Windows to their distro fairly simple since it uses the KDE desktop environment as their default. They also supply tools for pen testing, forensics, engineering, hacking, and uh, overall security and privacy. I hope you enjoyed this install of uh, Parrot Linux 4.7 and if you did please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe below. And make sure to check out some of the other videos, reviews that I have, and installs. Thanks for watching today and I'll catch you in another video.